everyone, this is Jane, and I have a message of love for you today. I wanted to put together this little list that's been kind of in the back of my mind about what I have learned in the first six decades of my life. And I feel like as we get older, we get these little bits of wisdom that really resonate with us and have made this huge impact on our life. And I wanted to just share some of my biggest insights from my first six decades of being a human being alive and going through everything that we are currently going through, but also just my past experience. So one of the very first things that has really made a huge difference for me is it started out to be this. If it's not hell yes, if there's a decision I need to make, if there's something that comes into my life as an opportunity, whatever it is, if it's not a hell yes, then it's a no. But that has shifted a little bit. And this is where it's even more powerful. If I have something, a situation, an opportunity, and it's not something I can decide on, then the answer is no. Because if I can't say yes to it immediately, um, and I might do some research on it if it's a it's certain opportunity, but I have really come to tune into my intuition. And I can usually tell at the beginning of something when I get the first information, or if I'm even invited somewhere um, that I'm not quite sure of, and I really can't put my finger on it. I don't know the exact reason why. Um, I don't second guess that anymore. So if it's something that I can't decide and I'm trying to go back and forth on it, uh, then the answer to me is no. That means it's, it's not something I need to keep entertaining. I don't need to explain myself. So having the power to just be okay with saying no is going to open up all those other yes opportunities. And this is something that I think we all know, but sometimes it takes us a long time to implement this beautiful bit of wisdom into our lives because um, we say yes to all these things that don't serve our highest purpose, which can sometimes improve our relationships, improve our financial abundance, uh, improve everything about our lives because we're too busy doing all these things that we said yes to that um, really didn't matter if we did them or not. So what used to be uh, a hell, if it's not a hell yes, it's a no. Now my mantra is this. If it's something I can't decide on, then that means it's no. And the faster I come to that conclusion, the simpler and easier my life is. And it's such a great piece of wisdom that I hope you find a way to implement that because it is such a beautiful way to live. Now one of the things too that I have really discovered, and this is something, I, I say this a lot because it's so true that health is not hard. Being a healthy, vibrant human being is really not hard. It's easy. It's actually something simple. But what gets hard is we have all these choices and we don't put these simple, healthy, easy habits into place. And so then health becomes hard because now we're trying to heal from diseases or we're trying to cure something or we've got a whole lot of weight to lose, or we've got to change all of our addictive behaviors like to fast food and junk food and alcohol and all of these things. So it's not that health um, has to be as hard as we make it, uh, but it's basically putting these simple steps into place and then letting them compound. So in reality, health is not hard. It is easy, but we have so many choices um, and it's been made easy for us to make the wrong choices that uh, it does appear to be more difficult. So that is something I truly believe. Uh, and it might make it seem like, okay, it's easy for you, but maybe it's not easy for me. Uh, the steps to health are simple, and it's just a matter of implementing them. So I give you a push forward for that because that is really amazing. Um, this one is really good to have six things, one for each decade. Um, and they're not in order. This is simply uh, how things I've kind of come to really realize. And here's one thing I think this gets us all in so much trouble with our own selves because it, it's especially with social media. And this is comparison is the thief of joy. And this is something we've heard forever and ever and ever. Think about how depressed that you might get if you scroll through social media and you see all these beautiful, rich people who make their lives look perfect and they've got everything down and they're on a beautiful vacation and uh, they look healthy and skinny and you know whatever it is that we're not or we think we're not 
But when I realized, and I realized this pretty early, I think too because I didn't grow up in a social media era, and I also grew up with parents who were the most supportive, encouraging cheerleaders of us individually doing and being who we are, that it was never about comparing ourselves to others. There's only one me, and there's only one you. No one else looks like you, sounds like you, responds like you, has the talents that you have. You are unique. You are, there's no other person on this planet who is like you. And I think what happens is we forget this, and we forget this on a regular, daily basis. So if you're having feelings that leave you less inadequate as you scroll through social media, number one, unfollow those people that make you feel that way. Or take a break from social media. Disconnect. Start working on the things that make you uniquely you. Work on your talents. Work on your gifts. Work on these things. And you will start to realize that you have something big and beautiful to bring to the world. And there's a niche and a thing for everyone. It's, it's, it's such a beautiful realization to come to, is that you don't need to be compared to anybody. And this has been one of those things that I have absolutely loved having this deep realization that there's only one me. I'm tall. Um, you know, all these things that I used to, you know, you know, I used to knit like my name for a little bit when I was growing up. It was such a tiny amount of time because my mom would sit me down and she'd be like, here's what happened when we named you. And this is how much joy we felt when we were, and I know everyone doesn't get that, but we need to realize that, you know, and not only that, if it's something as simple as not liking your name to the point of so horrible, change it. You can actually have the, you have the power to change your name if that's something that you feel makes you less than who you really are. So remember that there is only one beautiful, unique you. I, I so love that one. This one is crazy powerful. This one is to release people that no longer serve you from your life. This doesn't have to be a big, ugly blowout. This can be an easy release. And I think what happens is we stay in these old stuck relationships that don't serve us, that actually hurt us. And what you're going to find is that relationships flow. You'll have someone, a group of friends that might serve a purpose in your life for a certain period of your life. And then you might be in a growth mindset. You might be a person who studies personal development and is improving your life and getting better and, or whatever that may be. And your friendship base might change. And it's okay. And it doesn't have to be an ugly disconnection or even a verbal disconnection. It, you can ease back from these, from these people. And there might be even really toxic people that you leave in your life because you don't want to hurt their feelings or maybe it's just comfortable. So one of the best things that I have found throughout my life is when I'm able to just easily, without contention, without anger, without confrontation, none of that, um, I can release people from my life that don't serve me. And the thing is, sometimes they might come back and they might serve a purpose and you know life is ebbing and flowing and the people and situations and connections and especially social connections those things are so critically important and we we hear this all the time that we become like the five people we spend the most time with and unless you're a super strong person that has hardcore willpower like if you meet your friends every friday for pizza and beer um, maybe you do that two or three times a week then you're going to probably be someone who's unhealthy and unfit. Now, that might not be true for everybody. You might be able to be a person who eats something healthy and doesn't drink alcohol every time you get together with your friends. And that's some serious willpower, or maybe that's just something that is not a, an issue for you. But I think that's very, very rare. So strategically look at the people that you allow into your space and into your environment. And that will make a huge difference as you walk through life. And it doesn't like I said, have to be anything that's painful or ugly. In fact, it can be absolutely done with love without any kind of confrontation, which is pretty amazing. Okay, now this one, this one is huge. This one is to be brave. Sometimes, a lot of times, we don't want to do something that the masses aren't doing because we don't want to stand out. We don't want to cause contention. We don't want someone to say something mean to us. And 
it's easier just to follow what everyone else is doing. And I will tell you, I grew up with a dad and a mom who they were very active in standing up for our rights. They were politically active. One of my dad's brothers ran for uh, state senate when I, in Idaho when I was where we grew up, and we used to go out and comp campaign for them. We would put as teenagers flyers, and I think that by setting this example of being brave, because that's not something I wanted to do. I didn't want to knock on someone's door or hand a stranger a flyer. Or, you know, when we were young and we were we would go to church, we would have to get up and give talks in front of people, and that was like so scary. But it when you learn to be brave about everything and really standing up with love for the things that you believe in, it gets easier and easier and easier. And when you don't do that, you actually take a little piece of yourself and you discard this piece of yourself that is so critically important. And I think that this past year and a half has really proven to me how critically important it is for me to stand up and be brave for the things that I believe in. And I believe into the deepest part of my core. So be brave, whatever it is that you need to be brave about. Because when you take a risk, and I'm not talking about putting your life in danger or someone else's life in danger. I'm not talking about those things. I'm talking about being brave for the things that you know you need to stand up for, the things that you know would improve your life. You know, take a class that you don't want to, you maybe think is risky or is out of your comfort zone or, you know, this can apply to absolutely anything in your life. So be brave, stand up, don't follow the crowds. It's so much nicer on the outside of the crowds. It's so much more light and beautiful when you're making decisions that are based on what you believe rather than following the groups of people that are just trying to fit in. So that one, that one is a huge one. It has been extremely huge for me as I've gotten older. Now, the final one is this, to extend grace to everyone. So we are humans who need kindness. We need love. We are, we are beings of light and consciousness. And we forget because we get stuck in the weeds and we get stuck in the daily drama and we get stuck in the news and the politics and the environment and everything that we get stuck in and we forget that we are beings of love and light and when we can remember that it helps us to extend grace to all of our fellow humans no matter where they are no matter what place they are in their lives and it just it, it will fill you with so much gratitude for being alive like I have come to the conclusion that being alive and experiencing all the beautiful things that we get to experience as humans at this critical time in history is such a gift. We have been given this beautiful, extraordinary gift of being alive and experiencing all of the modern technology and everything, everything that has come out, especially this past year and a half, it's dialed in all those things to me. And I think that if we can come together and at the very least extend grace, you don't have to agree with someone. You don't have to condone things people are doing. Simply extend grace because you know what? That's the human way and it's a beautiful way to live. So thank you so much for tuning in. I love you guys. I know there's so much love on this planet that it would fill our hearts to bursting. So thank you for being here. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.